When we heard that Big Ed from Richardson Marine was 2,000 kilometres from his hometown of Warrnambool, up at Fraser Island here, we thought we'd have to come pay him a visit. He was having some R&R &R with some old footy mates and he'd taken up a Stabycraft 2500 demonstrator. This model is a little bit different from the other models we've tested. This is the 2500 Ultra Cab with a forward raking windscreen. Not sold on them yet? We are. Here are three reasons why. More internal space, no reflection from the gauges and no fogging up. This model is absolutely built for touring. The lock-up cabin is great for keeping the mozzies out when it gets hot and the wet stuff out when it gets cold. So this model is fitted with a custom little section here behind the driver's seat. And you've got a little butane cooker up top and a pie warmer down the bottom. Perfect for long missions away. The 2500 has a lot of extra cabin room so you can fit the driver, the passenger and a little burly bitch down on the seat here. Also got lots of storage here. This, these little areas are perfect for salt, pepper, olive oil, like everything. You've got your own little cooking station which sits above, above your butane cooker. All right, so up in the V-berth here, you've got an awesome little bunk which is great for your gear on long range trips and also sleeping. I'm six foot one and I'm pretty comfortable in here. It's not, it's not a five star hotel, but it's a, it's a camping trip and it's, it will do the trick. Underneath the cushions here, you've also got a toilet. Uh, Richo left us a nice little delicious treat in there. Thanks, mate. Like all Stabbies, they're famous for their great 360 degree visibility when you're at the helm. 2500 is no exception. All Stabies are renowned for storage and this 2500 is next level. These storage hatches have a huge volume and you could chuck a whole bunch of fish in there. Considering it's an aluminium boat, you might think that it would rattle around a lot, but the foam filling does an awesome job to keep this thing super quiet. Richo's really treated us on this boat. This one's fitted with an airwave pedestal seat, so it's a shock absorber, which means more cushion for the cushion. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Staby Crafts do the best bait stations in the market. But yeah, we've got massive bait board on top, great drainage, a couple of, bottle, couple of drink holders up top, and then a live whale in here. And it all just works all seamlessly together. Well, pretty much every Staby we've been on has always just had raw alloy side pockets, which means your rods do get rattled around a bit. I'm not sure what material Richo has put in here, but it's awesome. It means we can put gaffs, rods, everything, and it just doesn't rattle around, and it sticks in there too. It's perfect. Even more storage in the cockpits, and you've got one of these hatches on the starboard side and the port side. Big cabin also means a lot amount of rod holders. We've actually got 17 up there, and you'd think they'd be a bit close together, but they actually are quite well spaced apart. We had all of these filled today, and no issues at all. So you might think with such a big cabin, you actually wouldn't have any room to cast up the front, but that's completely not true. You can really just tuck your knees right underneath this bow rail and just send stick baits, poppers, whatever you like. Stabies are very efficient thanks to their low planing speed and flat surface areas. The motors are twin DF200 four cylinder donks, probably one of our favorite outboards of the last five years. They achieve amazing fuel efficiency of 1.1 Ks per litre of fuel combined. It's also a 40 knot boat. So this rig carries a 19 degree dead rise and the hull is foam filled, which does a great job of keeping the noise down when you're punching into a head seat. Having the helm a little bit further forward than usual with a forward raking windscreen, you do get a little bit bounced around, but it's nothing to worry about. Like all stabbies, this thing comes into its own when you're cruising home with a following C. Just set that throttle to 5,000 RPM, sit back and crack a beer. She's fitted with a Garmin 8416 and 8410, plus a Garmin radar and an SS175 high wide and SS175 low transducer. The rig sits on an easy tow alloy trailer and the whole package comes in at 235K. So the 2500 comes in at three tons dry, but loaded with fuel, all the gear, you're looking at it probably around 3.5. Now, that was Richo's kryptonite on Fraser Island because he spent more time bogged in this thing than he did driving. The plan was to do a little bit of fishing sort of on the uh, sort of the eastern side of Fraser, out in the, um, out in the reefs.
but the weather has turned like, absolutely cactus on us and um, crossing the bar is going to be very dangerous. So we, um, we've actually gotten a blower to Jim from um, Fishing Tin Can Bait and he's, he, uh, he's come out with us today and he's showing us a few of these little local reefs. Tin Can's a great little spot. It's right in that uh, perfect balance between the northern and southern species. So we still get a lot of the good reef fishing out the front for your snapper and that type of stuff, yet you get all the, uh, the tropical species. We get a great run of uh, mackerel offshore here throughout the year. And uh, mangrove jack, we'll get trevally, move through the bay, queenfish, um, obviously all your bread and butter species. So that one there is a blackall, also known as a painted sweet lip, marwong, or as I said before, gets called the mother-in-law fish. These guys have a bum rap for being known as poor eating quality, but if you do bleed them straight away, you brain spike them, they can be pretty good. The same is great, actually. Uh, I'd like a bit more vision out the front. That bow rail's a little bit of a, an obstruction in this screen in the way, but other than that, this, Handling of this thing is absolutely brilliant, nice and comfortable. The cabin's great, nice and dry. Especially on those windy, wet, rainy days, at least you've got somewhere to get out of the, out of the weather. Be a great little rig for jumping off the, over the Wide Bay Bar here and spending a, a night or two off Fraser Island. So would the captain's crew take one of these 2500s to Fraser Island? If you're experienced, you've got all your recovery gear, you're rolling with air compressors, winches and maybe a tractor, this thing's perfect. A three and a half ton is a lot of boat to tow along the sand. So you'd probably be wanting to go with something a little bit smaller if you were planning on, on towing along the beach, but that is a rig to launch out of Fraser Island or the mainland and then cruise over to Fraser and live on the boat. It would be absolutely perfect. <laughs>